What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here back again with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about a report coming from Elliot Freeman about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their deadline cap space or just their cap space going forward in general. I woke up a little bit early to make this video because it's kind of been on my mind for the last couple days but I've been really busy at work. Uh, so unfortunately, I didn't have time to make the video, but now I do. So if you are new here, I'd really appreciate it if you did like this video and subscribe. Join the squad. I'd love to have you guys here. Lots of Leafs trade and rumor style videos. I'm really working on getting a weekly either live trade rumor show or podcast going on here. I used to do that a long time ago, but I'd like to do that again. It's a lot of fun to be able to interact with you guys on multiple different occasions. So like I said, liking and subscribing helps the most i'd greatly greatly appreciate that follow my social media whatever you guys want to do um but yeah i don't want to waste any more time because we're going to be talking about something that came from 32 thoughts um obviously a very popular uh podcast and um you know written form blog by elliot friedman one of the guys who has the most you know ins in the entire league so number 11 obviously has to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs and it's a Toronto isn't against clearing cap space to prepare for a deadline ad now the the Toronto Maple Leafs technically could do a couple minor moves that could give them a little bit of space that maybe they can add some depth to this team but if they are able to clear a lot of cap space which is obviously what they need to do and a lot could be two to three million dollars because of you know getting people to uh, retain 50% like they did with Felino, and I've said it before like Riddich all these guys that they picked up and got teams to retain 50% salaries also I just want to say sorry if the focus is a little off in this video um, I'm trying to mess with some camera settings here so sorry to interrupt but um, just just to clear that up but um, back to clearing cab space the point of this video this line here saying Toronto isn't against clearing cap uh, clearing space to prepare for a deadline ad is probably sounding very simple but could mean a lot uh bigger in, in, in a bigger scale because a deadline ad for the toronto maple leafs especially if they're going to be competitive which they are so far even though you know they've blown a couple leads uh recently a deadline ad can't really just be depth they have to make a serious ad and i'm gonna say this for the 300 millionth time this season the Toronto Maple Leafs, while I don't believe a window is closed for this team to win because they still have a lot of talent locked up for a long time, and even if they move on from some of those guys, they still are very talented. The Toronto Maple Leafs this season, in terms of people not getting fired and not getting traded, this is the push the chips in year. We need to do something because we keep losing in the first round. Kyle Dubas has to be looking at his job right now and if they get bounced again in the first round there has to be change whether whether or not the head office or whoever believes that Kyle Dubas is 100% to blame for this there has to be change and Dubas will take a lot of flack for that now I'm I don't want the comment section to be filled of Dubas is bad versus Dubas is good but there has been a lot of good and there's been some bad this team on the ice that he's built hasn't performed up to standards, but a lot of those players are also to blame. That's the second part to this. Dubas could, lo could lose his job, and a lot of the core here, a lot of players that surround the core that are still really important role players could also be out the door after this season. This year, if they want to at least keep most of this team together, if they want to stick together, if they want to stay close, because it seems like a lot of these guys are pretty close. If you want to, you have to win. You have to be able to compete. You have to be one of the best teams in the league. You have to win some playoff rounds. You have to show big progress. Winning a round, sure, that might save some jobs. But they need to win multiple rounds. They need to be one of the better teams in the league because they're built like one of the better teams in the league. They're top heavy with a lot of talent. And they have a good blue line, good, in terms of guys like Riley, Brody, and Muzzin. That's pretty solid and good prospects with um, Sandine and Lilligren. Now, mind you, the blue line hasn't been good all season, but that's a very, very good 
core at least. And now you need to add to that to make it a great blue line. Good is not good enough to be a, an amazing playoff team. I'm using good very loosely because they do have talent back there. When they're fully healthy and playing well enough, they're a good blue line. We've seen it last year. They were pretty good. This year, it's been a little bit of a different story. But they need to add to that. They have good goaltending. Of course, they have great goaltending when Jack Campbell's in the crease. You know, he's played a lot recently, so Mrazek definitely needs to get some reps in here. But they have to find a way to win. And clearing this cap space might be a little difficult, but there are options. Now, we've talked about it before. As it stands, this is kind of the cap space necessarily that they have right now. Now, again, you can accrue cap space going into the deadline, but as we get closer to the deadline, we'll look at those exact numbers. But if we're going to keep it as simple as possible right now, this is the number that they have, $341,000. Now, that clearly is not going to get you anything, but there's definitely some pieces on this roster that could be moved in order to upgrade a forward and a defenseman. Now people think I might be nuts for saying that, but I do believe it's possible. We're going to put the we're going to use the LTIR here as traded because when you put them on here, the cap space goes up. Now people will be looking at me and saying Nick Ritchie, that's nuts. He was on waivers, nobody claimed him. Guys, I've said this in videos months ago about other players. I've said this in live streams about players on other teams. I've said this about Nick Ritchie recently. There have been way worse players on way worse deals traded. There's been guys like, look at the Clarkson contract. Somehow they were able to get rid of that with LTIR and, you know, teams that could take the cap space like Columbus at the time. We've seen Patrick Marlowe's $6.25 million contract get traded. A first round pick was attached, but it got traded and the Leafs got to hold on to Janssen and Kapanen, which at the time was obviously the better move. We've seen Mark Stahl. Look at that deal. He got traded. I believe that was for what? Like a third no, a third or a second round pick. That deal was worse. And it is still a bad contract looking back at it. There's been multiple players traded. And there's probably more. But those are the three that I can remember. Two of them obviously being Leaf ones. And the other one because um, I just remember. I think it was Nyquist talking about it uh, previously when it happened. But... There are much worse deals that have been traded. The Leafs, sure, because of Richie is getting paid more in the second year of his contract in terms of actual money because the AAV stays the same at 2.5. But in actual money, Richie's going to be paid more next season. Sure, that's a that's an obstacle. But teams that are not really competing right now and maybe just wants a physical presence for a year and a half. They'll be like, hey, give us a mid, uh, mid-level mid pick. I, I don't think it would be a second, but if they're really torn up on getting rid of the deal and they need to, a second or a third, not both, one of them, and I'm hoping it's a third, maybe a, a add another late pick, like a, a fifth or a sixth, and see if that works. If not, you get rid of a, you know, a C-level prospect attached with the pick and you ditch that money. Now you go, okay, Dubis, that was a mistake. You had to pay for it, but guess what? Now, if you trade Richie, you've got a little bit more cap space. Now that 1.7, if you get 50% retention at the deadline, you can add a player that's, you know, close or over the $3 million range. So you're able to get a guy that's, you know, at the 1.5 to 1.7 range with 50% retention, or you get double retention. You could get a pretty decent player. Now, if the Leafs are going to be upgrading and they want to upgrade up you know, in the forward group as well. I'm wondering if the Leafs also try to move on from Pierre Engvall. Now, this deal definitely will not be hard to move on from um, because, I mean, let's be real, guys. Engvall's not the worst player, but there are teams that might be willing to take a flyer on him or the Leafs could just simply bear, try to bury him in the minors and clear up come, some of that cap space because I believe if they did trade Richie and then they sent him down, which we could even try that right now, um, if you put Engvall, okay, yeah, so now they would only be paying $125,000 of his cap hit here, um, so they'd be at $2.8 million, so you could upgrade on your roster, maybe they call up Josh Hosang to see what he's, you know, what he's going to be doing, that could be a possibility, or they try to add to this forward group. 
Now, the other name that is out there, if you're going to be upgrading your top four, um, I personally would trade Justin Hall based off of dollar value, but the difference between him and Dermot is only 500k, so it just depends on who you would want to trade. Um, but I think just because of, you know, I mean, recent performance, Dermot hasn't been that good, but Hall has actually, you know, played a ton of minutes. You, you can rely on him a little bit more. It probably makes more sense to also trade Travis Dermot. Now, all of a sudden, you've got $4.3 million in cap space. That is a significant upgrade for, you know, trying to get a guy for your blue line and trying to get somebody for your forward group. That would be sending Engvall down while also trading Richie and Dermot, which people are going to say, well, this is fantasy land. It could never happen. Guys, these contracts can be moved. It's not impossible. Like I've said a million times over, teams would definitely be interested in Travis Dermot. He's just not working in Toronto. He's a decent bottom pairing guy. Um, and if the Leafs want to upgrade up here, you have to remove something. So Dermot would be that guy. Um, Nick Ritchie, again, we've talked about this. And uh, Engvall, you could send him down or try to trade him, but it'd be good to have him as some, you know, some depth. And like I said, you know, you could you could try to call up a guy like Josh Hosang. Uh, maybe Nick Robertson's healthy by then, but, you know, you don't want to rush him into another situation. But you can take this cap space, get 50% retention from other teams, and you can definitely make upgrades to your forward group and to your blue line. But again, um, the Leafs would have to probably get rid of some of these picks people are saying they have no picks to trade they definitely do they have you know again if you're going for it now you have to give up some of the future does a prospect like Amirov get involved in a trade I don't know does a prospect like Robertson get involved somehow I don't know but if you want to win now you're going to have to sacrifice the future you're going to have to lose something to get something and that's what's going to have to happen this the, guys, and I've said this a million times before, I know I sound like a broken record in this video, but what's going on in the world, and I can't say the word because apparently YouTube likes to block people's videos and they've done it to me before, they demonetize videos when you say, you know, what's, what's locking us down um, in this world. Um, without that happening, which again, I'm going to say it, no NHL GM or front office or anybody predicted that this would happen. No, nope. like a few years ago, did really anybody think, oh, you know what? It's, it's about time that the whole world gets sick. No, nobody predicted that. Nobody. The NHL salary cap would probably be sitting in the $90 million range. There was a new TV deal and a new team added to this league. Revenue was going to go up. There was all these outdoor games coming up. The, the NHL was going up. The salary cap was going up. That's the difference between the Leafs having like an extra $9 million in cap space. It screwed everybody. And right now it's screwing the Leafs a lot. But they have an opportunity still to clear cap space. And people are going to say, nope, not going to happen. It can't happen. Blah, blah. Nobody thought the Leafs could add to that team last year. And they added like three players. And Felino didn't work out, but he was significant at the time. So we need to calm down. We need to let things happen. And we'll see how the Leafs can do this. And we're going to see in the coming weeks, in the coming months, what they can do. So if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you guys will uh, be here for the next video or stream. Peace.